both. Madsen has just the noob cybot card, just the noob cybot card, and no icon. I said to him, why is that? And he said to me, because nothing else belongs there, just noob cybot. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want anything getting in the way. Right, so Blood God and Nimble, this was the matchup we were expecting. He doesn't get a stage, so they are going to go for the Cove. Now, this is a stage that Stunner has selected. Could this be a stage that Stunner likes for Nimble? I would definitely assume so, considering how, how well we saw him put the Intractables to use last time. I'd be surprised to see him pick anything else, because the stages do make a big difference depending on your character. Can really give you a lot more safety, a lot more options, and that's what you do it for. But no first hit just yet. And there we go, there's that reversal. Here comes Stunner. It's always quite a read when you use your only bar, because everyone starts with one bar a meter, but when you use your first bar to try and bag first hit, you know, if they block it, it's a waste. But just like that, oh, stops Ooh. the ball. That's interesting. Oh, there we go, there's the tech. Interesting. That was really clever. Really, really smart stuff by Pro Stunner. There's the safe, uh, the safe claw swipe. That's a true block string as well. Does a good amount of chip damage, goes on a good chunk of meter. Gets the down one in, Madsen going for his pressure here. Gets the damage totem, one hit here is going to be big damage. Madsen with three Ooh. bars to spend. That's the danger, Madsen sitting on three bars, tries to get the punish, doesn't quite get it. Jumps out of the 4 2 2. Oh, catched it. No ops not to use his bar, I think he's just going to go for chip damage here. Maybe try and build some bar. Oh, that's a really good delayed wake up from Madsen. Stunner just blocking. Very intelligent right there. Oh no, that very dangerous. I think Madsen not ready for the jump in to connect. Here comes the ground. Oh, he to go for the fast ball instead of the slow one, which did give Madsen a free jump over. Meter burn Sunray and damage reduction. Here we go. This isn't going to even out the health, but it's definitely going to make it harder for Pro Stunner to close this one out. Gets a read on the jump in. Oh, catch them pressing buttons between the block jumping punch. Oh, I'm certain Stunner was trying to go for a, uh, a Antia there. And he goes a bit too late. Very interesting, questionable decision to go for that. And he does armor through, but he takes so much damage. I mean, almost never the trade will be in your favor. He's low on health, but Madsen caught pressing buttons on Wake Up, which gives quite a long-winded round one to Pro Stunner. I like seeing players do that. I like seeing them not commit to the full string, and they are ready for the delayed Wake Up. Stunner, if he had committed to that full string, Madsen would have uh, punished him there, but Stunner went for just half of it, and then left himself safe. Let's go for the plus frames. Oh, Reza throwing throw and goes for a down two punish. Gets himself out of the corner, does whiff the jump in punch, though. And there we go, Stunner has no armor to reversals. It's all plus. Really could use just the pokes there. I mean, Madsen making um, just really good reads on the projectiles right now to just get cleanly over them. I mean, we know Kotal Khan has good jump ins, but oh, the plus frames of Kotal Khan to consistently read the projectiles as often as he is takes a lot of patience. And there he goes! He knows that Madsen's fuzzy guarding the low. Goes to the overhead as well. Very cheeky stuff. He has no bar. Unfortunately, Stunner has no bar. I mean, we really don't see Nimble shine until the meter has been spent. Or goes for a down two, but does eat the mid back one. Just like that, that's going to be chip damage. And this can make a miraculous comeback here, but very, very difficult. And yeah. there we go, that's guaranteed. I mean, the thing is, Stunner actually hasn't had the chance to do any nimble buffs whatsoever. We know that nimble can slow down time and enforce some mix-ups and some combo damage, but in this situation, we're really not having a chance to see it at the moment. And he tries to anti-cross up with the down three, but the back-to-back -back jumps. Oh, unfortunate, Madsen ready with the bait. Well, Does drop the combo. Say, I mean, Pro Stunner's opting to use most of his bar, if not all of it, on these uh, meter burn slides and meter burn overhead claws. So he hasn't really got the stats available for the uh, for the nimble buff, but Madsen breaks away. Doesn't get the totem, though. Gets it that time. Oh, good freeze. Really good freeze there from Stunner. Unfortunately, once again, that's really the story of everyone's life. I mean, Blood God has such an amazing job m uh, mitigating damage. It's just... Stunner is having to put in so much work just to take away the smallest amount of life. There's that free setup. I mean, Pro Stunner goes for a down three. Definitely not guaranteed, but challenges it. Oh, and there's the air to air. That's the big damage from the uh, the damage totem. And there's the quick rise again, forcing you to take the uh, the block disc. Oh no. And there we go. Oh no! Catches over here, but again, the damage mitigation, just 9% damage, not a lot. Oh, there's the nimble buff. Catches them jumping. Oh, breaks away, gets out of it. And that was a really, that, that really, really crucial break as well, because when you break, it also removes the other uh, speed buff. And right there, the damage mitigation is going to save Madsen from the damage there. Is he still alive? Is he still alive? Oh, oh. there's the anti-air. Game one goes to Pro Stunner and a meter burn slide for good measure. But right there, you saw just how long every round took because of that Blood God totem. It's just patience. Madsen playing very slow, very safe, but Pro Stunner playing at the speed that he needs to. I mean, we saw uh, Madsen was opting to go for the parries on the projectiles as well. So Pro Stunner was throwing the slow balls, 
like the slow versions, and, and he, he froze the second one. And he was stopping one. them to make Madsen not want to do it anymore. And then he was getting a few more, and you know, little bits like that. It was a very close game. You know, I, I don't think it's going to be a sweep this set. I think most of the game is going to go down like that. But uh, regardless, really, really good stuff. But Madsen opting to go for Grandmaster Sub Zero. I don't think he thinks the matchup really favors. So we've seen this matchup before. We saw it earlier today, actually, where it was against. Um, Costas and Harris went for Sub-Zero, because it's one of his main characters. Um, but to be honest, Stunner really did put on the clinic of how much he knows the matchup. Yeah. So this isn't going to be a matchup that Stunner's not familiar with. And to be fair, who hasn't got Grandmaster Sub-Zero experience online? Everyone plays that character. But Nimble Reptile, a character that, you know, you need to be very prepared for in a setting like this. But, you know, to prepare, you need to play it regularly. And we don't really have a lot of people playing Nimble, I'm especially Reptile. Assuming that start off uh, back floor there, I'm assuming that was to try and get around the down four. Because yeah. a lot of Sub-Zeros try and start with the down four. And here comes Madsen, ever so slightly too high, so he's not going to get the clone there. Does manage to bag himself out the corner, but jumps himself straight back in, but still manages to confirm off that catching the jump. Really nice uh, last minute confirm on the forward 4 one 2 Oh, and he tries to go for a new jump punch, but just does it ever so slightly too late. Oh, he tries to trip guard, but out of range. That's oh it. no, just straight on walking into it and then getting frozen and here comes another clone this is just this is really the bread and butter of grandmaster i think stunner trying to poke out some limbs hoping madden's going to block them obviously when grandmaster blocks his clone will disappear i think he i think he's predicting that madden's going to do a normal behind the clone so he hits madden before the clone which will obviously make it disappear but you know madden spacing himself correctly gets the corner of us just like that so pro stunner is in a nasty situation right now the problem as well is that Stunner has no meter. Uh, Nimble is meter intensive for the fact that the real bread and butter of Nimble comes from the meter burn slowdown, which you obviously have to spend a bar to do. And that was a wonderful chase down. Not a lot of damage, but gets the bar out of Madsen and makes him completely waste it. Catches it. Oh, tries to confirm, but not quite enough. Maybe the slide would have caught Bob's go for the Oh, down. nice reaction there from Stunner. Stunner just has to avoid the corner at this point, because that's exactly where Madsen needs him. And oh, there's the meter, meter burn, burn clone, just for the start of time. Goes for clone again. Pro Stun has got to keep him at bay. Really good block, because that's something Madden loves to do. He loves to use the 1 2 as a poke just to get that long range low and put it into a clone. Oh, I love the down 4 just to low profile the jump in. Really smart from Madden. But Stunner, who's actually ready for the, uh, the shatter there, that's one thing Reptile will do. And oh, he, drops he drops the combo. It. Very unfortunate. Oh no. Madden wasn't ready for it to connect, but then Stunner has no meter. And he slides into the clone. That's so heartbreaking. Oh, oh no! That's it. That's going to be game two that, to Madden. That, that drop's going to haunt uh, Stunner for a bit, because that's, that's taking it to 1-1, but that was his game. He had the combo, but again, you know, dropping it, cost him the momentum. Obviously, it got in his head, because he immediately started to uh, be a... I don't, I don't want to say random, but it was a bit of a scramble near the end. You know, the, uh, the Armored Claw reversal was kind of obvious, but I almost feel that Stunner thought it was so obvious that that's why he wasn't really ready for it to confirm. He thought, well, it's, gonna work. it's not going to hit him, but he's going to block it, and at least it's going to get rid of the clone. And it hit him, you know, because the clone disappeared, he got the hit. And then uh, that's where you got to confirm, but I guess he just wasn't ready. We're pretty much almost never uh, seeing the chance, so seeing players, um, especially Nimble, we're not really seeing the opportunity to go for the, um, the slowdown, which actually I was about to point out, but uh, Stunner has actually gone deceptive. Well, so say, yeah. I think he must realize that Nimble really isn't doing much for him. I mean, it helped him in round one because uh, you know, he was getting the momentum and getting the settings. But like I said before, he's using so much of his meter on the armored reversals that he just doesn't have the tools to, uh, to make the most of the slowdown. Oh, jump into back two, that raw 50-50. Oh, there's that block that time. Interesting oh, he tries how that to go for the it. punish. Very I think he just did it too late. I think that must have just been that he did it too late. And that's going to be big damage. The second you get tagged by that low, that's 43% meterless. That's one thing his Grandmaster, like, although Reptile may be meter intensive. Oh, he jumps himself straight back into the corner, but lovely recovery. Oh, whoa. Oh, he, I, I, hmm, I'm not sure. I, oh. He's still alive. Almost would like him to just sit there and wait for it to whiff entirely and then punish, but no, dive straight into an elbow dash. I'm not sure what that was. I mean, Madsen just tried to x-ray him and then... Round two. I don't know. Questionable decisions from both players, but Madsen's going to take the first round. Oh, no. And the fourth ball completely misses. Now, uh, Proston are thinking a little bit too far ahead here, it seems. But again, he's using so much bar. He has three now, though, but he's taking so much damage. Gets out of the corner, but... I have to be careful because Madsen has a significant life lead. Oh wow. Oh wow, nice. That was nice. It cost him all three bars, so very expensive, but I'm not quite sure if it was worth all the uh, the stock, but managed just to at least get Madsen cornered. I mean he at least lives to fight another day. And then here comes the clone. That's gonna kill him. Very, very a, a much more swift game three there. I mean Madsen's one game away from uh, getting his run back against Foxy in the grand finals, but I think Stunner, to be honest, just seems a bit... He seems to kind of just kind of 
frees up a little bit when he gets in. Obviously, no pun intended. But well, I mean, I, I think Stunners he does a great job, but when momentum isn't exactly in his favour, he seems to be quite predictable with his uh, his ways to get it back in his favour. Because uh, obviously, him hitting an armoured reversal is once you've got that combo, yes, momentum is yours again, and you've you've got things going. But if the other player knows he's going to do that, actually, Preston opts to go for Summoner Quan Chi. We do know he, he can play Quan Chi. Um, I've seen him use a bit of Quan in the past. Uh, Summoner. It's an interesting decision because the problem is, um, although Summoner is as strong as it is, when he gets put in the corner against Grandmaster, it is absolutely miserable. Like, it's going to be a matchup now of, of who wins after getting that one touch. Because if Grandmaster touches Quan Chi, you're going to push him into the corner but and for, then kill For that him. reason alone, I'm not sure if I agree with this character swap because Reptile has a lot of answers for the clone army. He's got a lot of armoured moves that he has to but, respect but. right there. The forward four clone is safe on block and now Stunner has lost his only bar to make stuff safe. And he's already cornered. This could be really bad if he can't get out of this corner. And there's the Shatter. And there's the clone. I mean, this, this in general, this is going to be story of his life right here. This is exactly the situation Quan can't end up in because if you're in the corner against Grandmaster, it's just so difficult. Stunner hasn't even been able to get a single move off yet. It was yet. practically a flawless. Aside from the chip damage that Meat Bone trans the trans did, that was a flawless. Madsen's looking to take himself into Grand Finals again. Uh, but, oh, and there we no. go. I just don't know. I think Stunner, he's, he's going to have to work a little harder for his damage than just raw trances. It's just not going to work against someone like Madsen, who's just so familiar with the matchup. Well, I like to think Madsen's a bit familiar with that match by now, the amount of times that me and him have played. Oh, and there we go Excellent. again. Again, not watching his feet, and oh, just not, not a situation you can do that in. I mean, Madden's ready for all of these defensive tools. He's just ready for them. That's going to be a clone. I'm well, not even necessarily. And there we go. That's guaranteed because the, the back three three meter burn clone. I mean, that's just. We said why we didn't think that was a great decision, and I think Madden pretty much just proved it. And he turned Quan Chi into a skeleton. Could that have been a little bit of foreshadowing? Everyone's doing it. It's Quan though. Have you noticed? It's only against Quan. Maybe. Is that some kind of uh, poetic justice that Quan Chi gets turned into a skeleton? I think so. It's not a glowing so. green one, so it's not the same. It's kind of. It's halfway there. No, it's not the same. It makes all the difference, man. I mean, Kenshi can do a blue one.